Stock showing some volatility this morning. I think it was down about 300 points earlier at last check. Let me just look this up really quick. Um, yeah, down about uh, 100 and. Uh, 30 points, so like 254 points rather than down, down. So uh, this all comes on the heels of the job numbers. 3.8 million people without a job now, more than 30, about 30 million now in total without. Uh, joining us now to discuss this, Michael Lee, uh, founder of Michael Lee Strategy, and Maddie Duppler, senior fellow at the National Taxpayers Union and president of Ford Strategies. Uh, good to see both of you here. Maddie, I'll start with you. What's your reaction here? What's your reaction to the activity we're seeing on Wall Street this morning? Well, Wall Street this week has actually had a very positive week. Dow's about to have the best week it's had in about 33 years, uh, mostly because, as we've been saying, we're dealing with a public health crisis, and we got some very good public health news this week. Gilead announcing that they had a really positive drug trial, uh, and also the federal government, Dr. Fauci, talking about how we may be able to speed up the development of a vaccine. All of those were positive developments that really drove Wall Street higher. Uh, earnings are still happening as well. Companies are still reporting what's going on in in their businesses and some businesses, as you may expect, were positive uh, or at least better than expected. Uh, businesses that work in the cloud certainly and relate to our uh, all of us moving to our, our home offices uh, have been performing well. So there's still a lot of positive business activity out there. And I think what we're seeing right now is that with the Federal Reserve committing to keeping all of its tools in play to sustain uh, or at least dampen the economic impact of the coronavirus, the market will continue to respond positively to that. Mike, let me bring you in here. Uh, the numbers are out for the jobless claims, 3.8 million for last week here, now bringing the total of Americans out of work that we know about, around 30 million. Your thoughts on that and how that's baked into the markets? Yeah, um, I have never seen stock prices as divorced from the actual economy in my entire career. So I would say uh, more so than a vaccine or anything that a public health official is saying, it's the Federal Reserve stepping in. Um, and the Federal Reserve has, has stepped in to buy all sorts of assets from high yield bonds to corporate bonds to municipal bonds, uh, as well as backstopping uh, another, a number of uh, different credit facilities uh, around the economy. Uh, Steve Mnuchin was asked point blank, will the Federal Reserve buy stocks? And he said it was highly unlikely, which is an interesting answer because it, it wasn't no. So um, I think there is a what you would call a Fed put to the markets right now. And what you have is uh, buyers in the market squeezing the short sellers. So the people that think stocks are going to go up are putting a lot of pressure on the people that think stocks are going to go down. And that short squeeze has led to one of the best months in the market in, um, in several decades. Um, I think volatility is here to stay. I think this, um, you, you know, the stock market is not the economy stock can stay higher. Uh, but I, I tend to think we are headed lower and that to try to forecast any sort of earnings going forward is, is a little bit of a fool's errand. It's a great point you bring up because there's an obvious disconnect here, uh, Maddie, with the markets and the economy, some 30 million people without a job. And another thing, they're not spending money right now, but you're seeing these record numbers on the market. Talking about that, consumer spending report is out. Take a look at this number. The index dropped 7.5% in March. What other key parts of the economy could the weakness in consumption affect? What else could we see? Uh, that would unfold now, Maddie. Well, and an overwhelming part of our economy is consumer spending. Over two-thirds of U.S. GDP is a result of consumer spending. So seeing consumer spending drop uh, obviously indicates the economic pressures that we're feeling right now in the United States. A couple things about that report. One is that it's for March, which we, you know, the beginning of March, we still hadn't felt the effects of coronavirus. So that means that April will likely look even worse on the consumer spending side. One of the things that led the decrease in consumer spending, though, was a drop in health care spending. All of the elective procedures that are happening in this country were put on hold so hospitals could make way for COVID patients. And that has had a direct effect on the consumer spending uh, numbers that we're seeing now. One thing, maybe a silver lining in all of this, is that uh, household savings have gone up as a result of that. I mean, Americans aren't spending money. There's nowhere to go. They're saving that money instead. Hopefully that allows for a little bit of a cushion moving forward as the months and weeks ahead still remain uncertain. Yeah, last question uh, uh, for you, Mike, uh, to bring you in again on this here. As far as the GDP is concerned, are we seeing um, a health care recession as well? As Maddie was talking about, people aren't going to the hospital like they typically would. You, you have reports of hospitals that aren't seeing patients. 
Yeah, so uh, the models going into the coronavirus were horribly wrong. Uh, so what I'd say is many government officials from both sides of the aisle underestimated the risk and the deadliness of the coronavirus. And when it became apparent how deadly it was and what was going on in Italy, they've overreacted. And so many parts of the country, hospitals are empty, they're furloughing staff, laying off staff, where you only have a few hot spots where you needed those available beds. Um, it all comes back to what I was saying on the previous segment. We need to open the economy. We need to lessen these restrictions. We need to allow people to have these elective surgeries because people are getting very, very sick. Uh, putting off some of these, quote, unquote, elective surgeries are, are, are going to end up killing a lot of people unintentionally from these models and these predictions that millions of people were going to die, which simply hasn't happened. So, again, uh, not only do we need to open up the economy, we need to open up the hospitals to anyone and everyone that needs treatment so that we don't make these problems that are already horrific at the moment much worse. That's Michael Lee, founder of Michael Lee Strategy, and Matty Duppler, senior fellow at the National Taxpayers Union and president of Forward Strategies. Thank you both for coming on. Good to see you. Still ahead, Belgium's potato industry is getting...